Before committing to how and where you'll dock, you'll first need to understand the effects that both the wind and current will have. Wind will primarily determine which way that your fuselage will be pointing when your aircraft is at idle or after you shut down. Just like in still water, wind will weathercock your aircraft, but its effects can be mitigated somewhat with power and the use of control surfaces can help increase or decrease turning radius. You can use the wind in the same way as you do with calm water, but keep in mind that current trumps wind when it comes to determining your path and speed to the point of contact at the dock. Keith Saunier is the CEO of Georgian Bay Airways, a floatplane flight school and charter airline based in Parry Sound, Ontario. He has thousands of hours of flying floats to his credit in all sorts of conditions, including fast moving water. When I approach a dock subject into wind and current, I do a quick assessment of the situation and form a plan. I like for the wind and current directions, orientation of the docks and obstacles on shore and in the water. Often at an unfamiliar dock, I will do a pass-by to assess for sharp points in the dock itself. Then I will decide how I'll do my approach and come alongside the dock. When I teach docking and moving water, I break it down into four common scenarios. Docking into current is going to slow you down, stop you, or even reverse you. It's preferable to dock into the current. It's going to slow things down nicely, and it's also going to make your water rudders much more responsive. Conversely, avoid docking with the current. There's no way to stop the drift once the engine is shut off, unless there's a strong opposing wind. Docking into wind and current is the ideal scenario. Not only will the current maintain the effectiveness of the water rudders, but the weather caulking phenomena will hold your straight line to the dock. One of the most challenging dockings that we have in narrow lakes and rivers is docking against the current but with the wind. You have to make a judgment call. What's going to affect the aircraft more, the wind or the current? But just remember, as soon as you pull back on the throttle, the airplane's going to want to weathercock. You have to be ready to quickly grab your ropes and get out onto the dock. When approaching a dock against the current where the wind is blowing off of the dock, the airplane's going to want to weathercock or nose into the dock. To counter this, we like to add power and generate momentum. Two key points on this, one, you're going to use a lot more docking space than you normally would. And two, you're going to want to practice getting out of the aircraft on both the passenger side and if you have it, the walk over wire. When approaching a dock against the current where the wind is blowing onto the dock, we can use weather caulking to our advantage. Use power to hold your line and mitigate the effect of weather caulking. Remember, when you pull the power, the weather caulking will naturally want to push the heels of the floats against the dock. Winds and currents are never constant, so expect that each docking experience will be a new one. Observe conditions and plan in advance what you'll do before you even start your approach to the dock. Part of that preparation includes some housekeeping on board the aircraft. Unbuckle your seatbelt, take off your headset, and unlatch the door so you can exit the cockpit smoothly. In the event you need to slow down the taxi speed while approaching the dock, drop your flaps depending on the wind pull carb heat, and maybe even turn one mag off to reduce your RPMs. When you cut your engine, switch off the magnetos, but leave the master on in case you have miscalculated and need to restart quickly to do another approach.